गाइस वेलकम बैक टू अवर चैनल अकाउंट्स गुरुकुल लर्न अकाउंटिंग ऑनलाइन सो टुडे वी आर हियर विथ अ न्यू वीडियो इन विच वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट हाउ टू प्रिपेयर द कैश फ्लो स्टेटमेंट एंड बिफोर गोइंग टू स्टार्ट टू नो दैट हाउ टू प्रिपेयर द कैश फ्लो स्टेटमेंट इट्स एसेंशियल टू नो दैट वॉट इज मीन बाय कैश फ्लो स्टेटमेंट एंड वाई इट्स एसेंशियल वी हैव टू प्रिपेयर द कैश फ्लो स्टेटमेंट so for each and every businesses we need to know that how is the flow of our cash into the business and based on that cash flow we are able to know how is the cash inflow and outflow into the business so to know that we have to prepare the cash flow statement and based on that cash flow statement we are able to know either how the healthy of our business and how we have the cash positions how much is a cash inflow and how much is a cash outflow in the business so that's we are able to know that based on the cash flow statements so request guys to please watch the video till the end because we are going to prepare this cash flow statement based on the our last prepared the mis and this is on real time we are going to do that so it's it's easy and beneficial for everyone to know that how to prepare the cash flow statements so request guys to please watch the video till the end like the video share the video and subscribe our channel and tap the bell icon to get the future video notifications so here we are so this is a cash flow statements template and before going to start we need to just understand the cash flow statement template as well so here this is a cash flow from the operating activities and the first we have to take here the net profit before exceptional atom and tax at tax so before going to do the exceptional adjustment the first we have to take here the net profit or net loss what we have from the our pnl and in our previous prepared mis in the pnl statement the profit was 544000 so this is your net profit you have to take it here then add depreciation and amortization expenses if you have depreciation and amortization expenses then you have to add here but in our pnl statement we have on charge any depreciation so we are not taking anything over there provision for doubtful debts and advances if you have any provisions created for doubtful debts or advances then you have to take it here the provision for doubtful debt says that if you have account receivable and that account receivables is more than 365 days or beyond that and if you have provided any provision for doubtful debts saying that ki that amount is not recovered or recoverable and you have the doubt on that amount or on that advance amount which you have paid so for that you have to create a provision for doubtful debts related to the sundry debtors net loss on disposal assets if you have sell any assets or sold any assets or disposed any assets and if you incur the loss on that then you have to add here exchange loss this is a forex gain loss fx gain loss if you have the fx gain loss then you have to add here the less net gain on disposal assets if you have any gain on disposed asset you have to add here liabilities return back if you have created sundry creators and it's more than 365 days or it's beyond that it's pending into the books as a payable and if you feel that there is no any liability on you and you have to do the return back for that then you have to add here exchange gain loss if you have exchange gain then you have to add here because we have captured here the exchange loss after considering all this you are able to know how much is the operating profits before working capital change so what is the actual profit that's the operating profits before 
going to see the working capital changes, you need to calculate for that. And we don't have any atoms in our PNL related to all these. So considering that we haven't added anything here. So we need to go ahead. So now the net operating profits before working capital and changes is 544,000. Adjustment for change in. Now here we need to understand the one thing is that what adjustments we are going to capture here because from the profit and loss sides we have captured here the net profit or net loss. Now entire atoms is remains from the balance sheets that we have to capture here. And adjustment for changes in says that if your asset is increased, so here we have mentioned increase is in bracket. It means that we have to take that amount into the negative and decrease. It means that in trade receivables, so this is related to trade receivables or assets, any assets you are increasing, then you have to take into the negative. And if your asset is decreasing, then you have to, if your asset is decreased, then you have to take that amount into the positive. Here, uh, it's very essential to understand that since we have our assets and that assets, we are talking about the increase the assets, but still we have to show here the amount into negative. Why? So that's very essential. W H Y Y. Because if your trade receivables increase, so it means that you use your material for doing the sale of transactions and against that sale, you haven't received the amount from your customers. So because of that reasons, and when you use the material for productions, you consumed your cash or use your cash for produce that material. So your, your cash is going out. That's an outflow for you. So considering that the account receivable, if it's increased, then it's going to be lost for us. If it's decreased, it means that your cash is moving out. It's a cash is inflow for that transaction. Similarly, increase in inventories. So if you see here, the increase, then you have to add here or show that amount is in negative. It means that you have paid for your inventories. You purchase the inventory and that inventory is increasing into the business. It means that your cash is going out, but your asset is still as it is. So you have to show that into the negative. And similarly, if the trade tables are increasing, then you have to show that into the positive. And if it's decrease in trade tables, then you have to show into the negative. So if it's an increase, it means that your cash is not going out and your cash is still as it is. So it's going to be give the benefit for your cash flow statement. And similarly, if you have any financial assets or that's also is going to be same impact of increase and decrease related to provision for expenses, if you have created the provisions, then it's going to be show the positive number because your cash is not going out. And considering that your inflow and outflow, we have to do plus and minus in the cash flow statement based on either it's cash is going out or cash is coming in. If you have any other current liabilities as well, and on that liabilities, if your liability is increasing, it means that you are not paying to your uh, vendors. So your cash flow is going to be positive sides. And if your current liabilities reduce the number, so it means that you've done the payment and your cash is going out, then that decrease you have to show into the negative. So this is a brief introduction about the cash flow statement, how it works. Now we will see based on the actual data, what we have from the balance sheets on that data, how it's going to be that we will capture here in this 
cash flow statement. And since this is the first year, so we don't have, this is the first month, so we don't have any opening balances. So that reasons, it's not too much complicated, but if it's a previous month's data was is there and you have to do the cash flow or prepare the cash flow statement for the next financial year or the next month, then whatever is a PTD moment, that's a period to date moment, we have to capture into the cash flow statement. If you are preparing cash flow month on month, or if you are comparing, if you are preparing the cash flow for an entire month, entire year, then entire financial year's data is going to be captured into that cash flow statement. And when you are going to prepare the cash flow into the next financial year, then the opening cash flow statements are there and you have to prepare the new cash or new cash flow for the current financial year, which you are closing. So whatever is the difference between that two numbers are going to report into the cash flow statement. So that we are going to cover into our upcoming videos, how to prepare the cash flow. If you have the existing cash flow for a previous year and you have to prepare the cash flow for the current financial year, that also we are going to see into our upcoming videos. Now, in this, we'll add here, so increase or decrease in trade receivables. So we need to see from the balance sheets since it's a first month. So whatever numbers are there, that's increase. So we have to update here. That's our account receivable. That's a 27,000 balance is there. Then this is into the negative side because those balances increase. So increase in trade receivables. Similarly, increase or decrease in trade payables. Now we have the trade payables and this is the first month. So whatever balance is there that we have to capture in a positive side, that's five lakh as a increase in trade payables. Next, increase or decrease in inventories. Since we don't have any inventory, so we haven't, we are not able to take any numbers here. Next, increase, decrease in other financial assets. If you have any other financial assets, then we can add there, but we don't have any other financial assets. Now the next, increase, decrease in other non-current and current assets. So other than the trade payables, other than the trade receivables and inventories, or any other financial assets. That's the financial assets is pertaining to the investment. So, and other rest assets, we have to add here, increase or decrease in other non-current and current assets. If you want to create the line items, separate line items for that assets, you can. Otherwise, you have to club here, entire remaining assets in this tab. So again, since this is the first month, so whatever assets are there is going to be sh show as a negative balance because that's all increase in assets. So we have captured, captured already the account receivable. Now, this is the bank balance. This is for fixed assets. So other than that, we don't have any other current assets or non-current assets. So we are not able to add here anything. Increase, decrease in provisions. So we don't have any provision in the books. Now, increase, decrease in other financial liabilities. It's related to the OD or some any loans. It's not there. Now, increase, decrease in other current liabilities. So in here, we have captured only the trade payables. But other than that, whatever liabilities are there, we have to capture here. Or you can create a one more line items if you want for that line items. So from the current liabilities, we have captured the accounts payable. Now the outputs GSTs are there. Salary payable is there. Uh, profession tax payable, TDS payable, and reimbursement of expenses payable. So we have to take all these to the balance into the cash flow statements as in increase in other current liabilities. So this is a total of cash generated from used in operations before tax. That's going to be some of your operations profit before working capital change 
and adjustment for changes in that's related to balance it atom and it's going to be now the cash generated from used in operations before tax is 24 lakh 18500 if you have any income tax paid net of refund refund that you have to add here and then the net cash inflow outflow from operating activities you will able to know how much is there then the next the cash flow from investing activities if you have any investments and on that if you incur any income that you have to capture here interest income and that's all going to be into the positive side so that's the interest income if income is there then it's in positive side proceed for sale of fixed assets if you have any provisions or doing any sale of fixed assets you have to add here proceed for sale of investment purchase of fixed assets so if you have purchased a fixed asset then you have to add here and since that's the asset so it's going to be show into the negative so for this positive which numbers you have to update there and which number you have to update as a negative that's essential in a cash flow statement to understand so we discuss on that so the positive number it's going to be show only when it's related to liabilities and related to incomes and if you are showing that as assets it's going to be show if it's increasing assets then you have to show that numbers into the negative so here that purchase of fixed assets so we have purchased a fixed assets investing activities this is a long term investment because this is a fixed assets so it's a purchase of fixed assets is into the negative because our cash is going out or gone out rent deposit deposit with bank if you have you have to update here so net cash flow from investing activity is 10 lakh now the next cash flow from financing activities so here if you have any long term borrowings so that you have to update here either it's an increase or decrease that number you have to update if it's increased then in a positive side if it's a decrease that number into the negative side similarly for increase and decrease of short term borrowing as well so if it's increase it means that you increase your liabilities and it's going to be more cash outflow so because of that reasons if you increase so then the cash is received from the long term borrowing so it's going to be impact on a positive side into the cash flow statement if it's a decrease it means that you have done the payment for that so it's you knew a cash flow the cash is going out in the cash flow you have to just keep in mind that what's the inflow and what is outflow so based on that we have to prepare this cash flow statement then the next is share capital so we have the share capital into the business introduced because this is the first month so we have to add that in our cash flow statements that's the 10 lakh 37600 that's the cash flow because the cash is in flow cash is in into the business so we have to add that here as a share capital if you have done any interest paid then you have to update here other finance cost if you have any other finance cost related to the financing activities you have to update here then the next net cash flow from financing activities so how much is the net cash flow from your financing activities is that 10 lakh 37600 now net increase or decrease in cash and cash equivalent that's going to be some sum of a b c so a is related to our cash net cash inflow outflow from our operating activities that's a 24 lakh 12 18500 cash flow from investing activities so this is related to the long term investment or investing activities that's a 10 lakh that's related to purchase of fixed assets 
cash flow from financing activities so that's related to the shares capital and other financial activities if you have based on that the net net cash flow from financing activities 10 lakh 37500 600 then the next after adding of net increase and decrease in cash and cash equivalent is 24 lakh 56100 and the cash in the start of the month if you have any opening cash then you have to update here but since this is our first month so there is no any opening cash to be mentioned here the cash in bank end of the month considering all this inflow and outflow how much is cash in the bank at the end of the month so that's 24 lakh 56100 and here cash and cash equivalents at the end of the month here we have to update the number from our balance sheets how much is the cash balance in the in our balance sheet that we have to update there that's 24 lakh 56100 and if you see now the difference in cash flow statements are zero so whatever is their cash in the bank that the same we able to calculate based on our cash flow statement and as per the cash flow statements how much is the cash in the bank at the end of the month is 24 lakh 56100 and the same cash is available in our balance sheet and that's 24 lakh 56100 so this is related to all the cash flow statement how to prepare the cash flow statement and what you have to add and what amount you have to update into the positive and what you have to show that amount into the negative and what is meaning of increase in assets and what is meaning of increase in liabilities that we have discussed in this video since we haven't added too many line items and too many transactions into the balance sheet so because of that reasons we are not able to get the entire data against all these rows but in the next upcoming videos that we are going to create about the how much is base create about the opening cash flow and we have to base on that we are going to prepare the cash flow for the next financial year so that times we will able to add the more data so it's going to be helpful for you to understand in depth so thanks for watching the video till the end and request guys to please like the video share the video and subscribe our channel and tap the bell icon to get the future video notification thank you